Uh, so today we have uh, Javier Magan with us, and he will be telling us about generalized symmetries, Noether, and weinberg witten Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, let me start by, by by thanking you all the organizers uh, for the invitation to to speak here, and also for for putting together this uh, this uh, nice seminar series uh, focusing on symmetries. So today I, I want to describe uh, some work I did in collaboration with. Um, with uh, Valentin Benedetti and Horacio Cassini. Uh, Horacio Cassini, uh, we all know, and Valentin uh, is, a, is a very strong student, is the student there in, in, in Bariloche. So this work, uh, this work deals uh, with the interplay uh, between generalized symmetries, uh, Noether's theorem and the uh, weinberg witten theorem. But it has also uh, other intriguing uh, ramifications, uh, such as the coleman mandula theorem, uh, the issue of uh, scale versus conformal invariance in quantum field theory, uh, new potential anomalies, and uh, also new insights uh, concerning symmetries in quantum gravity. I hope I will be able to uh, comment about <laughs> these things uh, at the end of the talk. So let me start with the, with the motivations. Um, the main ones come, uh, came from the analysis of the generalized symmetries of the graviton, um, which appear uh, here in this, uh, in this article. Um, we will describe these symmetries uh, in detail uh, later uh, in the talk, but uh, for the time being, uh, let me say that uh, these symmetries are rooted in the existence of, uh, of close to forms, like very much like in Maxwell field. But uh, crucially, uh, these symmetries, uh, uh, different from the Maxwell field, these symmetries are charged under space-time symmetries. The reason is that uh, these close to forms arise uh, from the Riemann tensor, which has more indices. So we have to, to contract them, and, uh, and, and, and then we find uh, two forms that are charged under space-time symmetries. So this is very similar to uh, fractonic physics. And uh, an, an immediate question that, uh, that appears is whether uh, this constitutes some kind of, uh, of class uh, with a potential uh, generalized uh, coleman mandula theorem. Since the theory is free, uh, it does not. But uh, I hope that the observation uh, is, at least for us, was uh, certainly intriguing uh, when thinking about UV completions, possible UV completions. A related uh, observation in this, uh, uh, after studying these symmetries um, is that this theory has no local stress tension. But, uh, but we saw that it does have uh, local uh, Poincaré symmetry generators. Uh, these are sometimes, sometimes called uh, local twists. We are going to define, it, uh, define them in a moment. Um, but uh, uh, so since, this, since there is a symmetry and, uh, and, the, and, and actually one can find the symmetry generators, but we don't have a local current, uh, we wonder whether this is a class with uh, Noether's theorem. Actually, more generally, uh, when we uh, realize this, we realize also that uh, one faces some potential class uh, between uh, the weinberg witten theorem and Noether's theorem. Uh, the reason is as follows. Uh, so the weinberg witten theorem says that uh, given a quantum field theory in three plus one space-time dimensions, if the theory allows the construction of a, Lor a Lorentz covariant um, conserved for ve vector current, uh, it cannot contain massless particles um, with a spin uh, equal or greater uh, than one that are charged under it. Also, uh, if the theory allows the construction of a Lorentz covariant uh, conserved energy momentum tensor, it cannot con contain particles uh, with a spin greater than one. On the other hand, uh, the, uh, the strong version, uh, we are going to define later the difference between the weak and the strong, but let me say uh, uh, the strong version of Noether's theorem states that each global continuous symmetry in a quantum field theory, uh, for each global continuous symmetry in a quantum field theory, there must exist a conserved uh, local current. So uh, here is the class. Um, which we didn't see, uh, uh, yeah, mentioned before, but it is kind of obvious that if a theory contains uh, vector particles charged under a global symmetry, and it satisfies the one verbitten theorem, the global symmetry does not have a current, and it violates the strong version of Noether's theorem. 
An obvious example of this class is uh, the graviton field that we just uh, that we just des described uh, in relation to the space-time symmetries. Um, lastly, uh, we were motivated also, uh, given these observations, we were motivated to uh, further understand uh, Noether's theorem in quantum field theory. So let me say that uh, a weak version of this theorem uh, was proven a long time ago by uh, by these authors here. Basically, what they what they prove is that uh, given a quantum field theory satisfying a certain property, which is called the split property, uh, we can always find uh, certain operators. They are called uh, twist operators. That uh, their purpose in life it is to uh, produce the group transformation in uh, a certain localized region. For example, this this region here, this region R, and. Uh, uh, but they do nothing in the complementary region uh, bar R. So this is uh, this is basically this, the, the content of this equation. We are going to to review it better later. Let me just say uh, for the motivations that uh, physically, physically, what this the, what this theorem is saying is that uh, local charges exist in any region. Now, uh, if local charges exist in any region, uh, this kind of suggests that we could extract a current operator in the limit in which we take very, very small regions, and also in the limit in which we take very, very small uh, infinitesimal trans symmetry transformations. Uh, but, the, uh, but the authors in the article indeed uh, notice that, uh, that this, this kind of, uh, well, uh, uh, motivated expectation, uh, this actually was unclear. And in this vein, we want to ask uh, whether, well, by the way, this, this will, call, will call it the weak, the weak version of Noether's theorem. So the weak version of Noether's theorem, the existence of this twist is proven already. Uh, what we want to ask in this article is um, whether the, uh, the stronger and the weak versions are equivalent. And if not, if we can classify uh, the space of quantum field theories satisfying the weak version and violating the, the, the strong. So uh, with this, I finish the motivations. Are, are, are there some questions about the motivations, which maybe they are not so con uh, yeah, conventional? OK, if not, I continue. Um, so uh, with, this, with these motivations in mind, uh, today's objective is to solve these issues by using and making further progress on the, on the, on, well, on the issue of this uh, semi seminar series which is generalized symmetries in quantum field theory. Uh, to this end, we are going to first describe a, a different look at these, uh, at these uh, features, at these generalized symmetries in quantum field theory. And uh, this will indeed uh, be important. I mean, this, this, new, this, new, uh, this different look will be important for the derivation of the results. Uh, in particular, uh, as we are going to see, this approach uh, naturally gives rise to uh, kind of a thinner classification of twist operators. Uh, so there are different kinds of twist operators uh, when there are generalized symmetries present in the game. And um, using this classification, we are going to describe the, uh, our main general theorems uh, in, in general form. After that, we will present two specific examples uh, of the physics uh, described uh, that contain basically, they are very simple, but they still contain all the physics. Uh, and explain the and then explain the origin uh, and extensions of the Weinberg-Witten theorem in this context. Uh, we will end with a summary, some uh, open conjectures that are that uh, we'll see um, uh, they get raised raised by the results, and some connections to different problems, uh, uh, different known problems. So um, let me start then. Uh, let me for this time uh, let me try to motivate this approach, uh, although we arrived here uh, with different motivations, basically with uh, motivations coming from quantum information theory. Um, let me try to motivate uh, uh, this different approach uh, using the language uh, that the, the audience is more used to. So this, la this language can be found in the, in the seminar article by Gayotto, Capustin, uh, Cyber and Willet in 2014, uh, which actually uh, uh, builds, uh, builds up on, 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 on previous research uh, in quantum field theory and, and string theory. So as far as, as I understand at this point, uh, such, an, such an approach is based on a certain, let me, let me put it this way, is based on a certain uh, classification of operators in quantum field theory. So uh, we have uh, topological operators, which are the uh, generators of the symmetry. 
We have uh, charge operators, uh, the genuine lines, in, for example, in pure gauge theories. Um, these, these charge operators play the role of, uh, of uh, generalized order parameters uh, for characterizing the, the phases of the theory. Um, we have also the global gauge group, which is encoded in the, in the algebra of these uh, uh, charge operators, these genuine lines, and, um, well, and, and, and more things. Um, but uh, let me say that within this classification, uh, maybe uh, some questions uh, uh, motivate uh, a different one when considering, at least when considering certain problems. The first question is, uh, as I said, the, the, the genuine lines uh, uh, and, and general charge operators uh, play the role of order parameters. Uh, the first question is, are all the order parameters included uh, in, in this way? That this is actually not the case uh, was uh, acknowledged uh, in the in the in the very same article here um, by the by the authors. Quite insight, insightfully, they noticed that uh, non-genuine uh, line uh, operators can be ordered parameters as well. For example, in the PSUN theory, um, the Wilson loops are non-genuine, and still they can be used to uh, to uh, characterize uh, confinement. So in, the, in this vein, uh, they leave open the, pro the problem of finding a, a simple, uh, let me say, unified characterization of phases of uh, uh, gauge theories and a more general quantum field theories. So in this vein, we would like to make progress uh, towards one. Would, the one is motivated to make progress towards such ca characterization. Another question is uh, uh, concerns the, the fall theorem that states that there are charge operators in all, irre in, in all irreducible representations of the symmetry group. Uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, seen as a phenomenological observation uh, in the theories and also sometimes taken as an assumption of what is a global symmetry. But it would be nice to understand it uh, from first principles. A crucial question for us, um, which is uh, actually our main motivating question, uh, because it's related to what one needs to define um, quantum information uh, uh, parameters for, for studying this physics. Uh, this question asks how this classification uh, emerged from products of local operators in local quantum field theory. So in, in, uh, with local quantum field theory, we don't mean a quantum field only, we don't mean only a quantum field theory that satisfies causality. We mean a, a, a quantum field theory in which uh, every operator that you have at your disposal can be uh, constructed by multiplying local, local operators. Okay? For example, uh, a conformal field theory is, 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 is a local quantum field theory. All operators at the end uh, emerge from products uh, of, uh, of the primaries. And, uh, and um, so basically this notion of local quantum field theory is, uh, is, uh, takes that and uh, construct, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, a bigger a space of quantum field theories that, uh, that contains those, but that just it's defined by uh, that, that property, that every operator is built, up, is built, is ultimately built by products of local operators. So we would want to see um, how all this, uh, all this classification uh, emerges uh, in, uh, in these kind of theories. This, of course, might not be important when considering certain questions, for example, in particular, when considering topological quantum field theories in which uh, we can, there are no local operators, so we cannot, we cannot do that, we cannot do that construction. But uh, it is certainly important uh, for understanding, for example, Noether's theorem or weinberg witten theorem, which actually deal with the existence or, no, or non-existence of certain local operators that generate uh, the symmetry. Uh, it is, as I said, also very important if one, if, if one wants to uh, understand the imprints of generalized symmetries in quantum information theory. Okay, so uh, having said that, uh, a, di a, a different but equivalent uh, uh, classification, uh, ultimately equivalent in the sense that one can derive one from the other, uh, of operators for quantum field theories with symmetries was proposed in this, uh, in this couple of papers. Uh, intuitively, let me say that uh, this classification just focus on uh, the full algebras of all potential order parameters. Okay, so the key question, of course, uh, here is uh, how we define an order parameter. What is what defines an order parameter? Our um, in in a, in a theory, our proposal is 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 simple. Uh, an order parameter is uh, uh, in a local quantum field theory associated with a certain uh, region. 
is uh, any operator that commutes with local operators outside the region, but uh, cannot be constructed by local operators within the region. Okay, this uh, uh, in the algebraic uh, literature, this, this type of operators are, uh, are said uh, to be operators that violate uh, hack duality. So let me put a simple, a, a simple uh, example. Um, a simple example is, uh, imagine we have a, a region which is, has the topology of a ring, and uh, we have a Wilson loop going around the ring. And in the mass, so we have the Maxwell field, we have a Wilson loop going around the, uh, around the ring. Uh, this Wilson loop, let me say, uh, it can be of any real charge. Uh, we can define it by the flux, of the, uh, by the magnetic flux, uh, with uh, exponentiating the magnetic flux with any charge. So it, it is therefore not necessarily genuine in the, in the language uh, uh, that, that you are used to. But uh, whether it's genuine or non-genuine, it commutes with any local operator outside uh, of the ring, uh, and it cannot be constructed uh, with local operators inside the ring. Um, so uh, in, this, in this vein, uh, the algebra for the Maxwell field, the algebra of uh, hard duality violating operators, uh, is, uh, so is uh, the, all the order parameters, let me say, uh, therefore includes uh, genuine and non-genuine line operators, and this is going to be uh, uh, very important, uh, very important for us. Cool. Let me say, obviously, in this case, this is another case, before I put an example of how um, order parameters doesn't need to be, uh, do not need to be uh, genuine uh, line operators, here's another example, like all magnetic fluxes can be used to, to define order parameters, uh, being genuine or not being genuine, doesn't really matter. For that. So, uh, what do you mean by product of local operators generating yeah, a line operator? I, I'm going. I'm going to explain it here. Better. Okay. okay. Uh, then, let, let me explain a little bit better, and then uh, maybe if there is still the question, uh, uh, I come back with. So. Um, so um, this, this classification in terms of order parameters can be formulated a little bit more precisely. Uh, so let me define exactly what, what uh, uh, that question that you, are, that you are saying. So consider a region R again. Uh, I put a ring, but it can be any region. Uh, we want to ask uh, how quantum field theory assigns uh, an unambiguous algebra to this region. Okay? That is the question uh, uh, we want to ask. In particular, first, we want to ask if it is unambiguous, if there is one algebra that it assigns. Um, let me say that one, one algebra uh, that we can, we can assign is always there. It is kind of obvious. We just uh, put uh, products of local operators. So we have local operators inside the region R. Okay, these are the, the, these green balls, let me say. Uh, and we can, um, and we generate, uh, and we multiply operators in all the ways we want, and we generate an algebra, which is the algebra, the, the local algebra in the ring. Okay. Um, now, the question is, is there another natural assignation for this region? Well, there is. Um, what we do is to do the same construction, but outside the region. Okay, so now we, we take the local algebra in the, in the outside the region in R prime. So R prime would be everything outside the ring. And we take the commutant. Okay, we call that um, um, the maximal algebra of the ring because it's by definition, uh, all the operators that commute with the local operators outside the region, and therefore are, uh, is the maximal algebra compatible with causality in quantum field theory. Um, was this uh, understood? Did you, did you follow that? Yeah. So the, the question, the key question here, the key question here is uh, whether uh, the local algebra in the region, which was given by all the products of local operators in the region is equal to the to this uh, more kind of involved algebra, which is the commutant, uh, all operators that commute with the local operators outside the region. So basically, it, we have this equality here. Okay. Uh, if, there are not, if they are not equal, it means there is, a, uh, in this case, there is a line operator it, with line, it, it, uh, I, I want to stress, it, it is not necessarily genuine. It, is, it, is, it can be genuine and it can be non-genuine, um, but there is a line operator that cannot be broken, okay? They, it, it, this line operator cannot be written as products of local operators in the region R. You, 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 uh, now it is understood your question? 
For example, let me let me come back again to, to the to the previous question. I, I'm going to go again uh, later. But the Wilson loop here, if I want to construct it with local operators, I need to define it as the exponential of the magnetic flux going through uh, uh, through the surface enclosed by the line. Okay. So uh, this goes uh, goes outside the ring. Okay. So to construct it, I cannot construct it using local operators inside the ring. Okay. Um, and so in the traditional terminology, the Wilson line would still be a genuine operator because it's not attached to a higher dimensional operator. Exactly. So, so in the in the in the traditional in the traditional uh, language, uh, genuine lines would be would be operators of this sort that you cannot break. But also, there are some genuine some non-genuine lines that also uh, are of this sort. So basically, um, uh, the, the, the breakability of a, of a line operator is a property that applies both to genuine and non-genuine line operators. Uh, and that, that, that is important for us. So it puts in the and same boat. The it's traditional a, definition of genuine is that it's not attached to higher dimensional operators. It's not about the breakability of it. Well, but at the end, it, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, equivalent, no? When you have when you have a breakability, this was this was uh, basically the way the way one proves that the completeness of the spectrum is equal to the absence of generalized symmetries. So um, the fact that uh, you can break a line a, a, a line operators is uh, is exactly equivalent to the uh, is how you break a generalized symmetry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, uh, maybe we can we can discuss this later, but. Uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, it is. Um, um... So there is a question in the chat by yeah. Kikuchi, and he asks, "Can R be extended in the time direction?" Yes, yes. Typically, yeah. Uh, good question. Uh, for 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 um, for the discussion here, uh, we don't need to do that. It's not so important. Uh, like uh, more rigorously. Uh, uh, when we said that when we uh, are discussing a region, we always think in the causal development of that region. So we always think uh, about, uh, let, let's say, the cone that surrounds the region in time. That that is the right definition of the region, and the algebra inside the region. It's uh, should I continue? Yeah. Are, are, there, are, there, are, there, are there more questions? No. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so let's let's discuss a, a, a simple example. So a simple example is the Maxwell field. So uh, in the Maxwell field, we have the current current conservation, uh, and then uh, this uh, what we call hard duality is violated in the ring. So we have this uh, these line operators, which uh, are uh, not only genuine, are not only genuine, uh, but uh, there are all these operators for real parameters Q and real parameter G. Which are the exponential or the fluxes uh, in a surface that uh, is bounded by the ring, and uh, all these operators commute because uh, because that surface is topological. Given the, the equations of motion, all those operators commute with local operators outside the region. So they are, uh, in this sense, they are uh, order parameters. Um, actually, one can compute their algebra, and it takes the form of a generalized symmetry transformation in this way. Uh, and indeed, in Euclidean signature, if we go to Euclidean signature, uh, the previous operation is exactly what, uh, uh, I mean, the, basically the, the W and the W minus one, they close into, into a closed surface. That is uh, what people call a, a topological, uh, topological symmetry transformation. So um, let me just say that with this characterization uh, of operators, which is a slightly different, puts the emphasis in a slightly different thing, uh, an input from the theory of algebras. So the, the good thing, of, of course, of this characterization is that now we can input uh, uh, certain aspects of the theory of algebras. For example, we can show that uh, charge operators exist in all representations of the symmetry group, uh, proving, for example, the fourth theorem mentioned earlier. Uh, this is in, in previous articles. I'm not going to present it today. Uh, uh, but uh, and also and also solves this issue that was mentioned in the paper by uh, um, uh, of generalized global symmetries of uh, having a, a more unified uh, approach to order parameters. Here, the, these are all the order parameters that we the, the algebras of all order parameters that we are considering. 
Um, before moving on, I want to uh, mention uh, something kind of, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, subtle, but that is important. Um, notice that an order parameter is only defined up to multiplication of local operators. Um, so in, in general, we are used to say that uh, we have this topological operator or this line operator, but all these operators uh, are ambiguous in the sense that um, uh, if we consider, for example, uh, a Wilson line an, uh, that was originally an order parameter, it was characterized, characterized by a quantum number Q, in this case, a, a real number. Um, now we, we, take, we take that, we multiply by a local operator in the ring, uh, so we create this uh, W tilde, and this is a new order parameter, uh, as can be seen uh, in two equivalent ways. Uh, first, it is clear that it also violates duality. Why? Because, uh, because uh, if we couldn't construct uh, this WQ, Q, uh, we clearly cannot construct uh, uh, the, this W tilde, um, because if we could construct W tilde, we just have to invert uh, phi and uh, and uh, and. Uh, and we will get the other. Another way to see this more clearly is that uh, this operator, uh, it satisfies exactly the same, uh, the same algebra with the dual uh, operators, in this case, the electric fluxes. So uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, observation, uh, we conclude from this observation that order parameters and, and line operators in general uh, form classes of operators, uh, where two operators are, uh, belong, to the, belong to the same class, if they differ by the addition, or better by the multiplication, of uh, uh, local operators. This is very similar to what uh, Xiaogan uh, was discussing for condensed matter physics uh, last week, um, uh, concerning certain equivalence classes under local operations. Uh, mathematically, uh, we can frame this here in, uh, very precisely. What we are doing is uh, the, quotient, uh, the, quoti the quotient between the maximal algebra and the additive algebra. So between the maximal algebra and the, and the algebra generated by all local operators. Um, let me say that this quotient can be used to uh, define uh, a size for the symmetry and a size for the algebra of charge operators, and uh, they both turn to be equal, uh, which is the theorem that I was mentioning before. Um, so are there questions until this point? I, I know it's kind of uh, uh, yeah. It, 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 this this approach put emphasis in a, in a slightly different, but it's, it's going to be important exactly for for for, for the uh, when we do the next thing. So let me say let me summarize. So whenever uh, we have a generalized symmetry, uh, we have a difference between maximal and local algebra in certain regions. For example, in pure gauge theories, we have a difference in in in, that, in those algebras when associated with rings. Now, uh, given that observation, let's now add a conventional uh, uh, zero form symmetry on top of this structure. Okay, so um, as, used, uh, as we are used to uh, from textbooks, uh, such global symmetry acts uh, locally. So, acts, I mean, locally, not in the sense, uh, well, uh, acts locally in the sense that uh, it acts as automor automorphism of the local algebra. Uh, so, basically, this equation here. This equation doesn't say does not mean that local operators are invariant. It says that the symmetry maps uh, local operators in a certain region to local operators uh, in the same region. Uh, so therefore, uh, the algebras in the region are invariant. Um, now, it is a simple fact. Uh, it is a simple fact uh, from uh, uh, that one can prove in one line that if an algebra is invariant under conjugation with a with a under conjugation with a unitary. Uh, then the same holds for the commutant algebra, okay? But as, as we were saying, uh, in cases where the commutant is not the same as the local algebra, uh, well, what we are concluding here is that uh, the global symmetry leaves invariant the maximal algebras also associated with regions. Uh, physically, what this is saying is that uh, is that the symmetry cannot convert uh, order parameters into uh, into uh, local operators. And the question uh, we want to study here is whether uh, even it cannot even if it cannot do that, if it can change or mix the classes associated with a certain region. Now um, it turns out that this mix. So basically, we want to, to we want to study this kind of this kind of uh, this kind of uh, equation. 
Uh, it turns out that the, this mixing can only happen um, in a point-like fashion, uh, fashion. So basically, a class is mapped to another class. Uh, this, this equation is not very difficult to prove, but it requires uh, further concepts. And uh, so if the, if the audience wants, I can discuss it uh, at the end of the talk, how to prove it. But uh, uh, for the time being, I will take it as, 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 as granted. So this is the type of, of equation that we are going to be dealing with. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, yeah. is, there, is there a question uh, here? Sorry, I have a question about the, yeah. the, the previous slide. Uh, yes. When you multiply a line by a, 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 a local operator, you are, are you supposing that the point where the local operator is supported is on the line? No, I'm, 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 here I always consider uh, like a smear operator. So for me, all operators are kind of uh, are not uh, really local or really lines. They are always a little bit smeared to be well defined. So here I'm just saying I'm just saying that uh, uh, this operator it, it support this is going to be a smear operator and its support is uh, is inside the region R. It can it can it can collide with the support of the line yes, but uh, uh, that's that's not uh, yeah that's not uh, an issue. But so the, the, there is no notion of dimensionality of the support of an operator. No, the, in, in quantum field, in interacting quantum field theory, it is known that uh, basically all operators to be well defined, they need to be a smear uh, both in space and time. So there, are, there is no notion of a well defined local operator, or there is no notion of a well defined uh, exactly uh, line operator. You need always to to to, to regularize a bit. Uh, you you can you can regularize, or uh, the usual way is regularizing. For example, when you take the expectation value of the Wilson loop, it would be uh, zero or infinite. Uh, and you need to put an epsilon, no? Uh, here we are just making that epsilon precise in the sense that we are taking operators that are uh, smear and uh, and then they, they, they are uh, well-defined uh, bounded operators. This is not this is not very 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 important. It's just some some subtlety, but uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we we don't have to face that issue. But, but but so how can you distinguish, for example, a one from symmetry from a zero from symmetry? Well, exactly because of because of this because the one form symmetry. Uh, have operators which are smear still, but that violate duality in a ring. While okay. as, uh, you, uh, oh, I see. I see. Uh, you understand? Yeah, I see. I see. But uh, so uh, another question: R. So it is it is it R is, to... R, R is any region that you want? Any so region? It, it, it is not supposed to be like uh, of the same dimension of the of the manifold. It can be also. It can be no, no. It can be yeah. It can be any, any, any. Uh, here I'm just. It, it just for the discussion. We just need it. Just uh, so we are in a Hamiltonian formulation. So you can go to t equal to zero, and uh, basically we are taking uh, uh, regions uh, compact in space uh, of any topology. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, I mean the, the simplest example is the only one that we will need really is is a, is a ring, uh, but this is a like a, a solid ring. So it has the inside. Okay. So, so, so okay. The, the, just to understand, if, if I'm understanding, uh, the, I mean, the, there could be a notion of dimensionality of the operator, but it's just like uh, the dimensionality of the region in which arc duality is violated. Exactly, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it okay. turns into that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, it, but that that way, this way, we can we don't have to face the problems that maybe you were worried about about whether it is uh, on the Wilson line or not, or yeah. uh, the, the products are well-defined inside the region, everything is uh, kind of, uh, uh, you can jump those things uh, easily. I see, thank you. Um, so this okay. question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, given an arbitrary theory, how can I convince myself an algebra at my hand is maximal? How, how can you convince yourself of what? That an algebra, at my hand is maximal. No, it's a, it, I'm defining it here. It's, I mean, it's not about the maxi, maximal. Is not about an algebra. No algebra is maximal or not maximal. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, so here, what we are saying is that um, forget about the maximal. If you don't like, that's a name. Forget about the maximal. We are defining. We are saying that there are two natural algebras for any region. One is the local algebra. It's just the algebra of, that is generated by multiplying local operators, smear local operators inside the region. But there is another natural algebra, okay? Because I can take the same definition of local algebra, but for the outside, okay? So I now take these green balls outside, okay? 
get that algebra, that would be the local algebra in R prime in the complementary region. Now take the commutant of that algebra, and this is by definition all the operators that commute with local operators outside the region. And in that sense, it's the maximal algebra associated with R that is compatible with causality. It's not um, the maximality is not about the algebra. It's about the uh, is the is the is the maximal algebra in a quantum field theory compatible with causality just because by definition, is all the operators that commute with the local operators outside. Uh, was this this is important? Was was this clear? Yeah. So I also have a question. Yes. So if I take a line operator that can be broken, yes, that would give rise to something in the trivial class. Is exactly. It? Exactly. Correct. And how do I see that? That if a line can be broken, it's in trivial class. Well, because you can, you, if it if it can be broken, uh, uh, you can you can construct it by by local operators inside the region. Because uh, because um, because you can put many lines many lines around the around the region and uh, and you will construct the loop by multiplication of lines that are inside these balls. Okay, thanks. Um, okay. Uh, good. Um, so okay. Uh, well, this. Um, okay. So um, let me now define something that uh, people is not is not used uh, uh, maybe so much in this community, uh, 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 but it's important, which is uh, the the concept of a, of a local twist uh, of a global symmetry group. So. Um, Given a, given a region R, here is a circle, but let me say that it can be anything again. It could be a ring, okay, R. It's not, a, it doesn't need to have a, a trivial topology, okay? Uh, given a region R, um, we construct, the, uh, we construct this, this scenario. Uh, we have the region, we have the complementary region bar R, uh, but uh, in between, we locate a smearing or a buffer zone, Z, with certain size epsilon, okay? Um, <clears throat> We can do that for any region. Now, in this scenario, a twist uh, tau uh, of the global symmetry group is uh, any unitary operator. Uh, is any unitary operator that implements the symmetry for local operators in R, which is this first equation here. So it acts on the local operators in R as the global symmetry. This U is the global symmetry, uh, but it does nothing uh, to local operators in the complementary region. Okay. Um, this buffer zone uh, or smearing zone C must be there in order for the twist to exist as a bounded operator in the quantum field theory. It, it is a kind of a, a again uh, some subtlety, but that in this case it, it is important and it plays a role. Uh, uh, it, it, it plays a physical role actually. Um, in general, uh, uh, when I have talked with many people in string theory, uh, they um, they uh, well. They don't consider this smithing zone, and then sometimes, it, of course, if it doesn't exist, you could get confused uh, uh, that this operator doesn't exist. But it, it it begins to exist exactly when 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 you let this uh, smithing zone to be uh, non-trivial. So um, in general, people is is very um, yeah doesn't like the, uh, cutting this uh, uh, this uh, operators because then in principle, if, if there is no smithing zone. You will have to put some boundary conditions here in the in the in the in the boundary of R. Uh, here again, uh, we can jump that uh, by putting this uh, smearing zone. We are going to see a construction in a moment, but I just wanted to make uh, clear uh, that. Um, so now, so th this is just the definition. Let me say again. Let me say also that uh, this operator, so these equations, uh, doesn't define a single operator. Okay, this has a huge ambiguity in its definition. For example, uh, once we have one twist that satisfies this equation, if I multiply by any local operator in the region Z, okay, then I get another twist because uh, that local operator commutes with operators in the complementary region and also commutes uh, uh, with operators in the in the region R. So therefore, the the, the resulting operator satisfies this equation. Again. Okay, so uh, uh, twist again define uh, they, they are operators that define a class, and the class is defined by multiplication of operators in this smearing smearing region. Um, so um, since the, since the, since this twist uh, commute by definition uh, with local operators in bar R, this is this equation here. It says that it commutes with anyone. 
um, we have that uh, the twist by definition belongs to the uh, maximal algebra, so the, the commutant of the of the local algebra in R, which is the maximal algebra in R union Z. Okay. Uh, so in a theory with further symmetries, which is what what we what we are uh, uh, going to, we are going to a, a, a scenario in which we have different kinds of symmetry. In a theory with further symmetries, uh, where as I explained before, maximal algebras are not equal to local algebras. Uh, this suggests uh, this naturally gives rise to a finer classification of twist operators. Uh, yeah, is there a question? Ah, okay. Um, so first, uh, so by definition, tau belongs to the maximal algebra, but it could happen that tau belongs to a smaller algebra inside the maximal one. In particular, it could be known to the local algebra in the in R union C. And if, if this is the case, we say that the twist is additive because it's uh, added with additive, we mean that it's local in the region. Okay. Uh, second, uh, these twists are defined as uh, uh, by how they act in the local algebra. Uh, so this twist implements the global symmetry by definition on the local algebra. But it could happen that uh, uh, it could also uh, affect the symmetry in the in the maximal algebra. Which is a little bit bigger. It could be a little bit bigger. In this case, we say the twist is complete. Okay. Um, given given these observations, uh, a useful definition uh, is that of uh, complementary twist. Uh, so we define it by using the by this equation here. Uh, uh, let me go through it. It's, 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 it's very simple uh, by using the global unitary. So if tau g in the right hand side is a twist for R then this complementary twist is a twist for the complementary region. Why? The reason is that uh, uh, tau g inverse cancels the transformation, the, the global transformation in R, but leaves intact the transformation in bar R. But what is interesting, I mean, this is, this is kind of very trivial. Uh, what, what is interesting is that uh, one can also see that if this twist here now is additive, then the the bar R twist, the twist in the in the complementary twist is complete. Uh, the reason is basic is is is, uh, is simple, but maybe yeah, there are too many concepts now, so it, it may be difficult to to grasp. But uh, let me say that uh, the reason is that the, if the, if this twist here is additive, uh, it means that it commutes by definition. It commutes with the uh, with the maximal algebra of the complementary region. But the global the global unitary does not because the global unitary does the does the global transformation in everything. So there is no cancellation here, and uh, this twist in the left hand side transforms also the non-local operators in the complementary region, and therefore it is complete. So we conclude that uh, complete this this uh, this classification of complete and additive twists are uh, dual notions um, uh, in this sense. Um, let me say we are we are we are not going to go over this in the talk, but uh, uh, in the article we saw that uh, both type of twist can always be constructed in quantum field theory. Uh, uh, to to this proof use modular theory. Uh, here in this talk we are going to go through explicit constructions, um, which would be more more um, yeah uh, more pedagogical here. So is there is there um, uh, questions about about this? Other questions? So when you write U G O U G inverse, you mean the U G is acting at every point on yes. the region? Oh, it's a U G. So when I write U G, is the global unitary transformation. So it's the it's the global unitary in a in the in the t equal to zero slides. Okay, you imagine in the Hamiltonian formulation, is the global unitary acting in a in a Cauchy slice? Okay. So I know that, and yes, of course, it acts the same way. It is, it is a global, it is a zero form symmetry, a conventional zero form symmetry. So I know that that transforms everything. So in, in the quantum field theory, okay. Uh, here, the uh, so that you always transform everything. Now, what is not clear is whether these taus, which are local, whether they transform, uh, uh, they are defined to transform local things, but uh, it is not clear whether they transform non-local things. Okay, and that is the issue that is uh, that that gives rise to this uh, finer classification. Thanks. So um, okay, uh, um, now bear with me a little bit if if it's uh, uh, um, yeah abstract. Now let me state the the the, the main theorems that that we derive. 
So the first uh, says that um, the existence, if we have twist of, so I said that there are twists that we can always uh, construct additive twist and complete twist, and also of course uh, twist in general. But uh, it's not clear that we can that we can construct simultaneously additive and complete twist. So the first theorem says that uh, uh, the existence of operators uh, tau, so the, uh, the existence of twist for a certain region that are both um, additive and complete implies that the that the order parameter uh, or the generalized symmetry, let me say, uh, it's a little bit uh, loose of language because there are many <laughs> definitions. Um, the 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 generalized symmetries associated with R are invariant under G. So is the, uh, in Britain in mathematical terms is this equation here. So uh, let me remark that this equation doesn't say that the operators are invariant. We are talking about the classes. So the, a, a given operator in a given class could transform, okay, and actually it will transform. Uh, but the important point is that uh, this global symmetry will not mix the uh, the classes, okay. <laughs> so the proof of this theorem is, is very simple. Uh, once you uh, kind of have uh, digested the, uh, this uh, this uh, this characterization, uh, first, uh, if the twist is complete, it means that uh, it implements the symmetry on the non-local parameter and the non-local order parameters. Uh, but now you realize that the order parameters in R are necessarily order parameters in R union C because uh, when I add C, I didn't change the topology. Okay, so a Wilson loop in R is a Wilson loop also in R union C, for example. But now, uh, since we are assuming that the twist is additive in R union C, therefore it's local, it's a local operator. And since we are, since we are quoting it uh, by the local algebra, this cannot change the classes in the in the, the non-local classes. Okay, um, so um, is, is the, I have got. Uh, uh, did, did you follow a bit, or or is it was very abstract? Um, let me say that although I mean uh, although it looks uh, very simple to prove, this uh, this theorem is actually uh, is, it contains as a special case the one that theorem, as we are going to see in a moment. Um, the the second the second theorem states states the converse to the first one so uh, uh, we, uh the first one is very simple it says that uh, if if there are a complete additive twist the classes are uncharged now we want to prove the, the converse if if there are uncharged classes therefore we should be able to construct uh, additive and complete twist well, uh, the proof of this direction is is uh, is uh, very long and quite quite complicated. Uh, you can find it in section four, but um, and I'm not going to re to review it here because it, it requires many other things. But it will be important for the uh, it, it will, as we will see it will be important for the for the conclusions. Um, what is important now is that from the first theorem, um, so we co we conclude that if the classes are charged. So uh, the twist must be or non-complete or non-additive, one of the one of the two. Okay. In the second case, in the case is non-additive. Uh, by definition, the twist might be has to be a part of a twist of the global symmetry. It has to be an order parameter itself for the for the other generalized symmetry, which is playing in the ring. Um, okay. So the third theorem states that uh, uh, global symmetries implemented by another current. Uh, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is going to be um, important. The, th the, the third theorem uh, says that the global symmetries are implemented by another current. We always can construct additive and complete twist. Okay, why is so? So the proof in this one is by by direct construction. So uh, if we have a current, uh, we can define the twist in this way here. Um, so uh, we exponentiate the, the this operator. So we exponentiate the local charge uh, uh, with the local charge uh, being defined in this way. So this J zero is the current, and these functions here, this beta and alpha, are smearing functions to make the operator uh, well defined. But they um, uh, they have to they have to satisfy certain conditions. Uh, most importantly, alpha. So the the spatial condition. Uh, says that uh, uh, alpha has to be equal to one. Uh, so to be basically when alpha is equal to one, then we are integrating J zero. So uh, this is the, the, the global charge. I mean, this, this is like in the global charge. But, uh, but uh, 
uh, then it has to be zero in bar R, so to do nothing in the in the complementary region. And uh, in the in the in the in the middle region, in the in the buffer zone C, we just let it decay smoothly. Okay, so that we get a, a well-defined uh, operator. Um, once these conditions uh, and, and then the beta, the, the beta, the smearing function beta is a smearing function in time, which is just it, it is not really important for, for, for the discussion, but it has to be there. Um, once these conditions are satisfied, one verifies that these operators are indeed twist. Uh, they transform the local operators in R because there is like the global operator, but they, they do nothing in, in bar R because there, there is no operator. There is no support of the operator there, and therefore uh, it, it commutes. Um, is, it, is it clear, uh, this construction? This construction only holds when there is a, a, a local current, okay? Um, now, uh, given, given this construction, um, one can go further and notice that uh, uh, two things. First, this twist is additive. Uh, this, this operator such, so, so constructed is additive. Why? Because I constructed it only using local operators in R union C, right? only using the local current. Because I have the local current, I, can, I, I just use that to construct the operator. But then, uh, this is a little bit more complicated to see, but uh, uh, then one, one can uh, see that the twist is also complete, okay? This can be seen by uh, writing the, the global charge uh, in, in this way here. This is a trivial rewriting. Uh, but given, the, but the, given that we are defining the local charge as an integral of a local current, um, so uh, this, this global charge minus uh, the local one is, um, is a local operator in, R, in bar R union C, and therefore it commutes with the maximal algebra of R. So this, this operator here, cannot have non-trivial commutation relation with uh, non-local operators in R. Uh, but since Q has non-trivial commutations, it means that those non-trivial commutation relations must come from the, uh, from the, from the local charge, and therefore, uh, and therefore the twist so constructed is, com is complete. And um, um, so uh, here we arrive to the, to the main result of the, of the work, which uh, if we, if we uh, join this theorem with the first one, uh, we get the following corollary that, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so here we have said that when there are no, when there are no other currents, we, we can construct additive and complete twist. And before we said that when there are additive and complete, uh, and complete twist, the classes are uncharged. So we conclude that uh, global symmetries implemented by another current uh, must live invariant the non-local classes of all other parameters. Um, yeah, are there are there questions about this? Okay. If not, uh, um, so let me say that uh, uh, this this uh, this shows that the uh, space of quantum field theories that violate the strong version of Noether's theorem. I remember. I remind you that the strong version of Noether's theorem was that version that says that for any for every global uh, continuous symmetry, there is a local current, okay? So uh, the, the space of quantum field theories violating the strong version is at least, at least the space of quantum field theories with uh, generalized symmetries charged under uh, global continuous symmetries. So when there is a mixing, okay? So given, given that, uh, that, that space is important, uh, that is the space we are after, uh, uh, is there any further consequence of having charge classes, generalized symmetries charge under, under, under a, global, a global symmetry? Um, one, for, one further cons consequence is contained in, in, uh, in theorem 4 that uh, only non-compact classes of order parameters can be charged under continuous global symmetry. Uh, the proof is very simple of this one. It just the non-compact classes of order parameters can be charged under continuous global symmetry. Uh, the proof is very simple of this one. It just because um, it, um, it just because uh, um, well, first we have to quotient by the by the part of the group that doesn't do anything. Once we quotient by that, um, we get a if we get a continuous Lie group uh, and that transforms uh, the classes pointwise, it must be that the that the classes must form a continuum. Okay. Um, and well, I, I'm not going to, to go over this, but uh, uh, let me just say that uh, 
uh, actually, when, when, when we have classes that transform, the dual classes, which are the classes in the complementary region, also transform and also form a, a, a continuum. I will come back to this uh, later. But um, OK, let me let me now go uh, fast uh, through through the examples. So you so in the previous slide, you showed us that the classes must form a continuum, but they can still form a compact space like a circle. Uh, 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 yes, they they could. Uh, I don't have. A, yeah, I don't have a, uh, examples of that, but uh, yes. Yeah, it's it it, 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 it just continues. Okay. With uh, um, with non-compact, we mean really that is a continuum uh, here. Uh, when I said non-compact, don't don't don't. Uh, uh, this is a, again a kind of a different, uh, yeah, a class of, of of conventions how things are defined. When I say non-compact, don't think on on the on the usual meaning that people give to non-compact generalized symmetries. Uh, for, uh, from this point of view, for example, the, this example that I'm going to consider has non-compact generalized symmetries. Uh, uh, I mean, that has non-compact uh, uh, set of order parameters, and uh, actually with group R. Um, yes, uh, so we are just meaning that in this case, okay. that, the, that, that the order parameters, the label, it is uh, it is continuous. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so the so the first example let me let me let me go uh, uh, fast through, through through the examples. The first example is very simple. It concerns two Maxwell fields in four dimensions. So it, it is this action here. Uh, the question of the equations of motion uh, the equations of motion uh, state the closeness of the field strengths of the under duals of both flavors. Okay. Uh, due to these equations, as, as for the Maxwell field. This theory possesses uh, possesses order parameters associated with rings. We just need to integrate uh, the fluxes, electric and magnetic fluxes, through surfaces uh, bounded by the rings, and uh, this will create operators for any real parameter q and g. Okay. So therefore, uh, in this theory, the, this hack duality violating operators form a group of R two times R two order parameters. Okay. Um, and a generic class of order parameters is labeled by uh, four real numbers. Um, so, but there is also a U1 symmetry uh, rotating the two flavors. Okay, uh, this is a global symmetry, a zero form global symmetry, and uh, it is clear that uh, this global symmetry transforms the non-local sectors because it's 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 changing. Uh, I don't know. You have a Wilson loop of uh, of certain flavor. Uh, this this global symmetry will transform it to uh, the Wilson loop of the other flavor. So it it, it mixes the classes. Really. Um, so we should expect some problem with the Noether current uh, and the, and some subtleties associated to the twist for this symmetry. Okay, and this is in this the case. Is, this is indeed the case. The naive Noether current. This has a this has been a study in previous literature, um, uh, that the people found that the naive Noether current for this symmetry is not gauge invariant. Uh, one and people have tried to um, to improve it to make it gauge invariant. No, uh, but. Uh, and, and with, with no uh, in the in previous literature with no success. Okay, here we see that uh, uh, um, our theorem demonstrates that this is impossible. Uh, you cannot make it gauge invariant because if not, it, it, it would be you you could construct twist as I as I as I construct here as I constructed here. You can construct twists that are additive and complete at the same time because you have the current. But therefore, uh, uh, therefore, as uh, as proven here, the charts, the, the classes should be unch uncharged. But since the classes are charged, that that current cannot exist. Let me say that, uh, uh, and this was unnoticed in the literature when people studied this 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 case, this example, that actually this example falls into also. I mean, uh, it is interesting because in this case, the non-existence of the current also follows from the Weinberg-Witten theorem, because here we have a photon, well, two photons. That uh, that are charged under uh, uh, a, cor a certain current, yeah, a potentially existing certain current. Since they are since they are charged, the current cannot exist. Okay. Uh, but uh, sorry, that's good. Uh, here the um, the gate groups are R or U one. Yeah. Uh, so in your language, they would be U one. Okay. For for us, as I said, so, so it, it, it's, it's different because I'm not focusing on on, on, uh, on the global group 
Okay, I'm focusing on the on the on all the order parameters, and here all the order parameters would be the the ones associated to the globe, what you call the global gauge group, but uh, but the, which would be, for example, I don't know, you could you could consider yeah, you you want uh, and and you want, so that would mean uh, uh, Wilson loop with with integer charts and and and, and top loop with integer charts. But then the ones with real charts, they are also they, with uh, they need a topological surface in your language. They are also have duality violating for the ring. So actually, the half duality violating uh, operators they form the R two times R two. They, they are not labeled by integers. So here, here it's, a, it's a different. Uh, we are we are putting the emphasis in a different thing. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't matter whether you choose to this, the theory to have U one U one or R R or it doesn't really matter. Here. But sorry, it, the the uh, the other you want symmetry rotating to, to flavors, huh? It's yeah. not preserving the the Dirac quantization condition, right? Um, here, uh, uh, the Dirac quantization condition doesn't play a role because these are surface operators, and and when I, I when I uh, link the boundaries of the of the of the of the two surface operators in a non-trivial way, okay. Uh, this doesn't commute because they are constructed as surface operators, so they touch each other. There is no, there is no problem with causality. But so, I, so I would say that the gauge group is R. Uh, you could, you could say that, but uh, I, I just want to say that this will also happen. Uh, 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 this will also happen for uh, the in your language for the U1 choice, because in the U1 choice, uh, you also have the the, the non-genuine operators. Which are these uh, electric flux? I mean, it just you see, it just this this operator here, for example, for 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 in the in the U in the in the U one case, there are uh, there are there are some some set of curves integers that are the genuine lines, but there are also real one. I can put a real one here, and this is just a magnetic a, a magnetic flux. It's an operator that exists in the field, and what is important for us is that even if it's not a genuine line. It it uh, it commutes with all local operators outside the ring, so it, it is a hard duality violating operator. Okay, uh -huh. um, it's a, it's a, it comes comes back to the yeah to the motivation of uh, that I was commenting at the beginning. What I'm saying is that even in, in, in these things that I that I'm telling, they will happen for any choice of global gauge group. This is important. So, so in order for Q and G to be non-integers here, is it crucial that the that the loops are contractible. Yes, 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 yes. I'm considering. Yeah, yeah. Good question. I'm, I'm, of course, I'm considering uh, uh, right. uh, my theory in Minkowski space all the time. Right. So if they are contractible, I think instead of thinking of them as Wilson loops, it's more convenient to think of them as like the the, the gauge backgrounds of the two form gauge field associated with the one form U one and the one form U one tilde. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm happy to deal with that. I'm just saying that uh, uh, um, that uh, this operator exists, and for for us, they are just operators that violate duality in the ring. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's a, It's another so, property. You should. Uh, right. yeah. So I, I would think of this W and T as something associated with the the like the the flux of the two form U one and two form U one tilde. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's exactly that. It's exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay. Um. So um. Um. So the question is: Is is there a, a U one glo global symmetry or not? Um. In Minkowski space, if there is, we should be able to construct the twist. Okay, and the global symmetry itself. And the global symmetry is very simple. Uh, Although the current is not gauge invariant, when I integrate it over a whole hypersurface, uh, I get a gauge invariant operator. Um, but uh, if our results are correct, the nature of the twist, of the local twist uh, that uh, we can construct must be constrained. So in particular, uh, if we find an additive twist, it cannot be complete and vice versa. Okay. Um, so let me go fast over this. Uh, to construct additive twist for a local region R, we can proceed by gauge by, by gauge, gauge fixing. Basically, we, we start with the with the expression of the of the local charge uh, that follows from the gauge non gauge invariant current, which is this is this expression is the same. I'm putting here the current. This is in principle non gauge invariant. But now I could I could just uh, solve the equations that relate the gauge potential and the dual gauge potential with electric fields, which are these ones here. I can solve them. Uh, 
and write the gauge potential in terms of the electric and magnetic fields, uh, respectively. Okay, this I can do that. I can do it in in a region at, at the expense of uh, well of uh, missing some information. Okay, which is exactly the information that tells that these operators will transform uh, will transform the the local fields in this way in the same way as the as the global charge. So this is this equation here that you can verify, but uh, they will not transform the, these fluxes. Okay, these fluxes that go away away uh, away from the ring. Okay, um, so um, uh, in this sense, they are not complete. So this is, these are twists that uh, are additive, but not complete in, in consonance with what I was saying. Uh, we can also construct the, the opposite one. And uh, uh, this can be done as, as, as I said before, is the easiest way. Uh, we can use the dual complementary, to co complementary construction. We define the, the, the twist in the complementary region by this, this formula here. And if this is additive, one can verify that uh, this is first non-additive and also it is complete. It transforms the fluxes in this case. Um, so uh, we, 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 we conclude that uh, uh, yeah, we can have uh, additive or complete twist, but not both simultaneously. Um, is, is this clear? Okay. Uh, I think I'm going in the in the sake of time. I'm going to jump the graviton field. So um, the graviton field goes very much uh, in the same way as, as the previous field, just that the U1 is played by space-time symmetry, and the and the close to forms are constructed are kind of uh, yeah are are, the, are something more complicated constructed from the Riemann tension. Is this uh, this these uh, operators here uh, constructed from the space-time from the from the uh, Riemann tension? But uh, otherwise, it's completely similar, and uh, uh, and the and the and the outset of other theorem of our theorem is that since the classes are uh, charged and the space-time symmetries, then uh, there cannot be a, 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 a stress tensor in the theorem. Okay, uh, so our theorem demonstrates that uh, the graviton field cannot have a stress tensor. Um, so of course, again, uh, I choose. So I, we 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 studied a, a series of of examples uh, in the uh, in the in the article, but I chose uh, these two ones because uh, uh, both of them are afflicted with the Weinberg-Witten theorem. So there is clearly a relation uh, here. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the Weinberg-Witten theorem uh, says that uh, uh, given a quantum field theory in three plus one dimensions. If the theory allows the construction of a Lorentz covariant uh, for vector current, it cannot contain massless particles uh, with a spin equal or greater than one that are charged under it. And also, if the theory allows the construction of a Lorentz covariant conserved energy momentum tensor, it cannot contain massless particles with a spin greater than one. So to rewrite to rewrite this theorem, we notice that uh, in particular in uh, three plus one dimensions, three theories of massless particles with a spin uh, greater or equal to one have one form symmetries, okay? Um, and also that three theories of, ma of massless particles with a spin uh, greater than one um, have, uh, have one form symmetries with charges that uh, carry space-time indices. So we have, we have seen the, the case of spin one, uh, which is of course uh, uh, related to, to a field strength, we uh, uh, the case of spin three halves, uh, uh, one can also work out that there are these close to forms with one spin or index uh, free. So this, this will be, when, when we construct the charge, it will be charged under space-time symmetries. And the spin two uh, is the Riemann tensor, and you can keep going, okay? You can keep going. So since, uh, since, this, since, since all these fields, all these massless particles have uh, generalized symmetries, they cannot be charged uh, under, under a global symmetry having another curve. And this is, uh, this is, um, this is the Weinberg-Witten theory, okay? Notice that we, uh, um, we are assuming neither the quantum field theory is free, nor the generalized symmetry is exact. This is important. So we are assuming, as, as Weinberg-Witten did, that the global symmetry is exact. Uh, so it's exact at all energies in the quantum field theory. If this is the case, and the global symmetry has a current, uh, then we can construct, in the way that I, met, that I described uh, before, we can construct twists that are additive and complete at all energies, okay? In particular, both in the ultraviolet and in the infrared. Uh, but in the infrared, it, this should be impossible because uh, in the in infrared, there is a, a, an emerging generalized symmetry uh, 
uh, that that is uh, that is charged and that potentially charged under it, and it, it won't allow it. So uh, we conclude that the Weinberg-Witten theorem is uh, rooted in a topological abstraction that appears uh, when charging a one-form symmetry with a zero-form symmetry. Okay, so it is kind of a let me say, although I'm not sure about this word completely, but uh, I think it's a uh, in your language, it's, it is a no-go theorem for certain type of, of putative two-group symmetry. Okay, it's but uh, what is yeah? Question. Yes. Uh, for this U one case. Uh, do you mean it cannot contain charge the massless particle with a spin equal or greater than one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean what in, what what Weinberg Witten uh, theory means. It means that uh, uh, you cannot have a, a particle with a spin. Uh, for example, you cannot have a photon that is charged under uh, a global symmetry. That has charge in the sense of, uh, of an electron having uh, uh, having, uh, having charge that it charges under a certain global symmetry with, that is generated by another current. It's exactly it's exactly this case. Let me as an example. It's exactly this case that I was mentioning here. No? Um, so here we have two photons, okay, and the photons uh, have two uh, two flavors, uh, and the U1 rotate between the flavors. So this this photon is charged under a global symmetry. Okay, uh, and so this charge is not a charge of a photon. It's a different, different charge. Ah, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a mixing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, this is this is a scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's sure. another charge. Okay. Yeah, it's is the no other charge associated with the zero form symmetry. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. It, all these situations are mixing of symmetries. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, what we are uh, realizing, I mean, this, this, this is it's kind of obvious now uh, uh, in this construction, but uh, uh, it is obvious that, the, that the, if you look at the statement, just if you look at the statement of the weinberg theorem, you have a massless particle of, of certain, for example, a mass, let's say a massless particle of spin one, this has a generalized symmetry, we know that. Uh, but uh, he's talking about, uh, they are talking about uh, having a, a, a being charged against a certain no other current. So there is another global symmetry. So there are two symmetries playing in the game here. Okay. Uh, I see. Okay. And, and, uh, and uh, well, we are saying that uh, this follows from, uh, from, the, from the theorem that I, I was mentioning. Um, but uh, the, the nice thing is that uh, when, when, um, when we uh, when we realize uh, uh, this in this way, we immediately uh, recognize uh, several extensions of the theorem. Uh, the first two extensions concern uh, different space-time dimensions and appropriate repre and different representations of the Lorentz group. This, of course, is not very surprising and actually has been discussed in, in, in other places. But the, the most important generalization, uh, though, is that uh, our theorem is not only valid for uh, theories which have uh, quasi-particles in the infrared, but it, it is also it, it is a theorem that is valid for uh, quantum for interacting quantum field theories with quasi-particles such as conformal field theories, for example. Um, in other words, we are not assuming the uh, like an S matrix, uh, the existence of an S matrix, or the existence of massless particles in the infrared. Um, also, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a natural equivalent statement uh, for finite group global symmetries, okay? Uh, basically, is the impossibility of having charged classes, uh, classes of generalized symmetries that are charged under a zero form symmetry uh, that is discrete and, this discrete, and this discrete symmetry has a complete analytic twist that is uh, impossible. And the last extension concerns application to non-relativistic quantum field theory. Uh, of course, this is kind of, uh, Still um, not rigorous, uh, but uh, yeah, but but we are pretty confident that many of the things that that we have said that, that, that this uh, this uh, formulation it is actually not really dependent on the fact that the system is relativistic. It is more dependent on uh, the algebraic properties of of the yeah uh, the localization properties of the algebras, and therefore uh, these things. And actually, uh, I have talked uh, with, with several people that. Uh, yeah, that uh, they have told me that uh, they have seen this kind of uh, non-existence of, of, of local currents uh, in uh, in several examples that fall into this into this uh, kind of novel theory. Um, so let's let's stop now and make a little summary uh, of the most important messages, uh, just uh, physically. Uh, first, uh, continuous global symmetries that do not live invariant uh, uh, the uh, classes associated with other generalized symmetries. Would be zero form, one form, 
three form uh, other general symmetries cannot be generated by another current. Uh, in such a scenarios, uh, the general symmetry must be um, must be non-compact in the sense that we have defined through the top of having dual continuous algebras of uh, order parameters, uh, 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 not in the usual way of, of having a, a global gauge group which is non-compact. Um, let me say that these observations uh, provide a potentially complete characterization of the quantum field theories violating the strong version of Noether's theorem. Um, basically, these are the quantum field theories with generalized symmetries that are charged under continuous global symmetries. Uh, these, uh, these observations uh, allow, allowed us to, to, to connect uh, this whole problem with the weinberg witten theorem, which we could uh, rederive and extend. And the technical novelty of, of this approach was the, uh, the development of a finer classification of twist operators in quantum field theory. Basically, they, they are those that are additive and they are those that are complete. And actually, there are, there are more uh, features uh, uh, that are required to prove the theorems. But uh, 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 so, yeah, there's it, it, a whole space there of, of, uh, of new properties. Uh, OK, so let me end with uh, uh, some conjectures and connections to other problems. So the first conjecture says that a theory with a continuous global symmetry where all generalized symmetries are invariant under the symmetry must be generated by another current. This basically would end the, the problem of the Noether's theorem in quantum field theory. Now, uh, what is what we are putting here new? So the non-trivial new input that we are providing uh, for this conjecture is the proof that the, uh, the, the proof of the converse to our main theorem. Basically, that when you have uncharged classes, you have twists that are additive and complete, that are, that, that are both additive and complete. Um, this feature, uh, seen for, for reasons uh, explained in the article, seems very much the, the invisible obstruction uh, for people uh, trying to prove this, this, uh, this, this uh, Noether's theorem. Um, uh, and it seems the, the invisible obstruction to prove the existence of a current. Um, the second conjecture says that uh, when you have this kind of uh, non-compact generalized symmetries, non-compact in the sense, now actually we are going to see very, very clear what, I, what do I mean with non-compact uh, and how it opposes to, to the, the, the conventional use of non-compact. So um, let me say that, let me first state the conjecture. Uh, the, it says that when we have this uh, non-compact uh, 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 algebras of hard duality violating operators, non-compact, let me say, generalized symmetries, um these these cases are necessarily free so the first input for this conjecture is that uh, all the ub complete theories that we have found in this scenario are free okay uh, but uh, so for example the maxwell theory but uh, notice that there are important effective theories that fall into this class uh, uh, they are this uh, they are these these ones here and so uh, for example we could have the maxwell field with a quartic interaction or uh, a, a dipole type uh, coupling uh, of the Maxwell field with uh, a neutron, for example, with a charge, chargeless uh, particle. Uh, these effective theories turns out to be turn out to be non-renormalizable, non and one wonders whether they are UV completable or not. Okay, and uh, we can frame that in the in the in the using generalized symmetries by saying that all these theories have actually uh, these non-compact uh, algebras of hard duality violating operators, because even if, even if I have, um, if the equations of motion change, I can always write them as the closeness of certain, of certain uh, physical operators. I just need to change, instead of being df equal to zero, it would be d f tilde, with f, f tilde uh, uh, being f plus something that comes from the equation of motion. And this will generate a non-compact uh, generalized symmetry. So, um, and uh, the way to frame this question, we believe, is whether uh, a UV completion exists that conserves this symmetry. Uh, if this uh, so this conjecture says that this is impossible, and uh, this would be, in case it's true, it would be a new anomaly in quantum field theory. Uh, the non-trivial uh, non input uh, for the conjecture is the existence of uh, dual non-compact algebras of order parameters. And uh, uh, we are about to prove this conjecture, uh, uh, and hopefully the article will appear very, very soon. Um, let me say that if both conjectures uh, uh, are true, this uh, uh, so the weinberg witten theorem is strongly improved, and the reason is is as follows: uh, we start uh, with the with the uh, with the assumptions on the weinberg witten theorem. So we start with an exact global symmetry 
for the whole theory, for, the whole, for all the energies, and an approximate generalized symmetry in the infrared. If such generalized symmetry is charged, we cannot have a local current for the global symmetry. If the first conjecture is true, uh, now the, the non-existence of that current means that there is a generalized symmetry at all energies. So the generalized symmetry is actually uh, valid at all, at all energies. And then if the second conjecture is true, then, uh, then, uh, then uh, it has to be free. This certainly closes many loopholes that, that have been explored to avoid the implications of the weinberg witten theorem. So I remember that the weinberg witten theorem has mainly been used to basically say that one cannot construct a quantum field theory of, of gravity. And, uh, and, the, and this would make that much more stronger. This would go in that direction, uh, particular potentially uh, saying that uh, there cannot be an, an asymptotically free sa safety scenario and, and, and this kind of, this kind of uh, explorations. Uh, in particular, it would, it would not allow, so the, 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 the basically the main loophole in the weinberg witten theorem is whether, so the weinberg witten theorem says that there is not a, a graviton with a stress tension, but who knows whether we can construct an interacting quantum field theory without a stress tension. Uh, well, that's the theorem that we would prove here. Um, the next connection uh, concerns the problem of a scale uh, versus conformal invariance in quantum field theory. So a typical route in this endeavor uh, involves improving the stress tensor to make it traceless. Okay, uh, so we start with the stress tensor from for space time for Poincaré symmetry, and we try to improve it to make it traceless, and then have a, the stress tensor of a CFT. An abstraction uh, 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 arises uh, from our perspective if the class if, you, if we have generalized symmetries that are uh, charged under a scaling symmetry. Because if this is the case, uh, following our theorem, uh, there cannot be a scaling current, okay? There cannot be another current for a scaling symmetry. So there cannot be a scaling current, and therefore there cannot be an improvement of the stress tensor either. Because if there would be an improvement for the stress tensor, we would, we would be able to construct the scaling current. Now, it was quite, quite shocking when we realized this, that uh, all examples that have been unraveled with a scaling symmetry, but without conformal symmetry, uh, these are, for example, the most famous one is the, is the mass well field in five, in five dimensions. Um, they actually fall into this class of having generalized symmetries that are charged under a scaling symmetry. So this, uh, this then suggests uh, uh, another conjecture, which is that the scaling invariance in, implies conformal invariance when there are no classes, no generalized symmetries charged under a scaling symmetry. Uh, as with Noether's theorem, uh, these aspects seem to be the missing piece in the way. So people have been trying to, to prove this, but sometimes it cannot be proven if, if you are not inputting all the all the all the all the yeah uh, all the possible obstructions to that theorem. And uh, this seems to be uh, this this seems to be in the way uh, the missing piece. So in this indeed uh, joining this conjecture with the second one uh, would imply that the models with a scale invariance but not conformal invariance are free which is another conjecture, by the way, and another false theorem in the literature and around this topic. Uh, finally, there is a natural connection with these results with the coleman mandula theorem. Uh, so basically, it goes in this way. So even a quantum field theory with a stress tensor, uh, our theorem shows that all generalized symmetries must be Poincaré invariant. So there is a, so th there cannot be mixing. So if the quantum field theory has a stress tensor, there cannot be mixing with generalized symmetries. Uh, and this generalizes coleman mandula uh, theorem in, in, in that direction. Uh, but uh, this, this connection needs further elaboration and we have to come back in the future. So thank you very much for uh, le letting me go over time uh, and, and do it so kindly. And thank you for the attention. Thank you, Xavier, for the very nice talk. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question in the last slide, the third. The third point uh, you have in the in the last sorry uh, one moment. The, oh, the, the summary slide. Well, one moment, I mixed the. I think they. Let me see. Um, sorry. I missed. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me know. The third point, uh, I, try, I try to understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. You're assuming yeah. that uh, if a general extend from IR to UV, then it must be free. So that's a condition. If a general no, 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 it is not a, it is not a condition. No, no, it is, uh, let me, let me repeat it, let me repeat it, uh, let me repeat it again. 
So um, no, th this is conjecture two. So I have conjecture two, which says that uh, whenever you have uh, non-compact uh, generalized symmetries in the sense defined uh, uh, before, so in the sense that, for example, Maxwell theory with any compact gauge group, I mean, with any with any choice of global gauge group has a a non-compact uh, set of order parameters in the in the sense of hard duality violating order parameters. So if this is the case, the conjecture two says that uh, this is free. This is not. This is this is a still. I mean, this is a conjecture. Uh, actually, this one we are about to prove it. So uh, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure about this conjecture, but it's a still a conjecture. Let me say. But given this conjecture, so now is the argument. So what I'm saying is that if both conjectures are true, the second and the first, okay, then the uh, then the Weinberg beaten is strongly improved. Why? Because I start with uh, so the, the the starting point is having a exact global symmetry at all energies. Uh, exact zero form symmetry at all energies, but uh, an emerging um, one form symmetry or other type of general symmetry in the infrared. No? For example, if you have the graviton, if you have a theory that in the low, uh, at low energies has a graviton field, it has a low energies, a generalized symmetry, which is a one form symmetry. It might not be exact, it might be just approximate, but, uh, but uh, that's, that, that's the starting point. Now, uh, if the, if the, so, if that's the case, that's the starting point. If that's the case, our theorem says that you cannot have a, because at low energies, the generalized symmetry is charged under the zero form symmetry. The zero form symmetry cannot have a, a no other current at any energy. Because if it would have a current at, uh, you could say, well, maybe it has a current at, at high energies. But if it has a current at, at high energies, I can construct the twist, the, this, this twist that are additive and complete. And this twist, because they are defined at, at high energies, they act at all, at, at all energies. And that is impossible because they cannot do that at, at low energy. So there cannot be a current. Okay, this is our theorem. This is this is already proven. But now it comes. The, the, now I apply conjecture one. So conjecture one says that whenever we have a continuous uh, global symmetry, this is Noether's theorem. This is the, the end. Like, let's say it would be the end of Noether's theorem. So whenever we have a continuous global symmetry, uh, if if there is not so the inverse is that if there is not a Noether current, it's because there is a generalized symmetry charged under it. So if there is not an other current, uh, uh, the generalized symmetry has to be exact. You see, uh, I mean, uh, following this conjecture, this is what this conjecture conjecture one says. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conjecture. So basically, what it says is that uh, uh, it it it, uh, it now takes the 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 generalized symmetry, which was in principle only emergent in the infrared, and says that it has to be exact at all energies. But if it's exact at all energies. Uh, then I can apply conjecture two. I have a non-compact generalized symmetry. It is non-compact because uh, it is the same as, as, as in the infrared, which was non-compact uh, from our perspective. And therefore, uh, conjecture uh, two says that it's necessarily free. Uh, I'm just saying, I mean, this is, this is of course, everything is unproven. I'm just, I'm just uh, saying that it, it, it would be an important uh, um, outcome. Yeah, I, I try to get a summary. Uh, you see, if a generalized symmetry is exact in UV, then it is free. You don't say that. Yes, yes, yes. If it's non-compact, if it's non-compact. Oh, if a generalized symmetry is non-compact and exact in the UV, it must be free. Yeah, yeah. That is the conjecture too. And that, uh, that so, uh, for example, uh, uh, maybe it's shocking at first time, but actually think that if you want to construct such a such a such a theory. The only way would be to add terms like these ones. So basically, you that the, the question is how do you construct an interacting theory of the photon without including electric or magnetic charges? That's the question. Okay. Now you could say, well, I can add this kind of terms to the Lagrangian. I can add a quartic interaction. I can add uh, I can I can add a, an inter a, di a dipole interaction that doesn't include electric charge. This this could be a, a, a neutron field, you know, a, a, a field without charge. But now you realize that all the terms that you can add are not renormalized, uh, 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 are, are irrelevant, okay? Yeah. And, 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 and therefore, you could say, well, is that theory, and of course, this, of course, let me say also that these terms will arise necessarily if you have charge, electric and magnetic charge in the UV and you integrate out these electric and magnetic charges. So you, you will uh, uh, create those, these terms. But the question is, 
can I, can I uh, complete the theory until the UV without including these electric and magnetic charges? So without breaking the, 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 this, the, the generalizing. And the, and, the, and, the, and the conjecture says that this is not possible. That, uh, that basically the non-renormalizability non of, of, uh, of these terms is tied to an anomaly. Yeah, so let's try to understand this statement. So suppose you have a, in the IR, we have a, a Maxwell theory, which have a, a emergent uh, one-form symmetry. Yes. You will say this one-form symmetry must be free, uh, must be exact in the UV, and then it, the theory must be free in the UV. If, 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 there are, if there are no electric and magnetic charges, yes, that's what I'm saying, yes. If there are no electric and magnetic charges, but if the electromagnetic charge is very massive, very heavy. Yeah, yeah, you could have, you could have those. And then, and, then, and then you could have, of course, and then the, 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 uh, yeah, in the UV, when you go, so if you have electric and magnetic charge, they might be very heavy, but they have a finite mass. When you arrive to that mass, you break the generalized symmetry because electric and magnetic charges, uh, they break the Wilson lines, okay? Or, or the top of the top lines. Yeah. Uh, and, and therefore, they break the generalized symmetry. They break the non-compact generalized symmetry down to a compact one. I see. And, 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 and therefore, in the UV, there is no generalized symmetry in the UV when you go above that, that mass in which the electric and magnetic charges appear. What we are saying here is that it's exactly that, that there has to be such a scale, such a scale in which electric and magnetic charges appear and the generalized symmetry is broken. And in this sense, this is an, a new anomaly. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But, sorry, I'm, I'm still confused about this, um, be, because uh, if you add like uh, electric, uh, electric charges, uh, the magnetic symmetry is still continuous. Uh. Um, no, no, but it has, but yeah, yeah, the, 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 the magnetic, uh, um, yeah, but the, 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 the order parameters would be like, for example, the, the Wilson lines, no, uh, which would be have a, an integer, an integer charge. I mean, the other parameter for the magnetic symmetry of the, are the top lines, no? In, 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 in Maxwell theory, you have two one-form symmetries, uh, and you break one of them if you add uh, either electrically or magnetically charged uh, matter. But uh, if you add only one type, uh, you break all, only one of them to a discrete subgroup, uh, while the other is still continuous. Yeah, the others, uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, this this case. I mean, we expect also not to be not to be. Also, uh, yeah, we, I, I would. Yeah, let me let me just say that the conjecture talks about uh, well, uh, like both of them having non-compact, uh, not not continuous, like having non-compact generalized symmetry. Sorry, I, I committed a mistake there. Uh, still, uh, we believe that uh, this conjecture extends also to that case. So actually, um, yeah, I mean, notice that QED would be the sample has a Landau pole, no? Yeah, uh, in, in in four in four dimension, yes. Yeah. But uh, if, if, you, if you go, for example, in three dimension, then the, the electric symmetry is still a one-form symmetry, while the magnetic one is a, is a zero-form symmetry. If you have the electrically charged particles, you break the electric one to a discrete subgroup, and you preserve the magnetic, but it is a zero-form symmetry. But you can also add like a monopole operator to the, to the Lagrangian. Then you break the, the zero-form symmetry to a discrete subgroup, and you preserve the electrically Electric mm -hmm. one from symmetry, which is still continuous, uh, and I would say that the, the theory is, uh, is really complete. Uh. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, le let, me, le le let me say that we are only uh, talking, I mean, in all these cases that, that, uh, that, that we are discussing, uh, when, when you ask that question, I, 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 I didn't, yeah, I, I wasn't thinking in an example of, of U1 uh, uh, compact. And um, those are outside of, of this of this conjecture. Clearly, yeah, you're right. Uh, apologies ah, for the okay. uh, apologies okay. for the, apologies for the. So bo both basically, uh, yeah, uh, uh, basically both both uh, uh, dual and non-dual. I mean, do, both dual order parameters have to be continuous. Okay, this is uh, this is this is here. You see. Uh, uh, the, uh, dual non-compact algebra of order parameters. This is the important point in the in the proof. Actually, that that that, that we are uh, finishing. So uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, when you 
only have a, 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 a one point symmetry. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, a U1 and the, and the Wilson loop with integer charge, for example, uh, that, that, that falls out of this, of this conjecture. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, in a previous slide, you mentioned that uh, this can also work for finite groups. Uh, on the other hand, we know that for finite groups, including um, like generalized symmetries, it's relatively straightforward to put the theory on the lattice. So in that case, what does this buffer zone that you needed to define the additive and complete notion correspond to on the lattice? No, no. I, to, to define additive and complete, I, 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 I didn't really need the the, the smithing. Actually, to, to just to define those things, I, I, I didn't need the smithing zone. I can define it. Need, what? I didn't need the, the, the this this uh, this C zone. Still, you can define it in the lattice as well. It's not that it's not that there is a problem to the we define it in. So, so this having this zone is not a necessary part. Uh, it's, it's it's a necessary part in quantum field theory for the operators. In the only in continuum, only in continuum. but but is but uh, but uh, yeah exactly yeah when when you are in the in the lattice uh, you can define this thing most of the uh, yeah I, I I didn't think so maybe what I'm going to say has some subtleties but uh, uh, what I, what I just want to say is that this is meaning zone is typically done uh, is typically put uh, as a requirement for these operators to exist in the continuum. If you are in the lattice, uh, you can you could just uh, you could just close that uh, to zero, and the questions that I'm asking, uh, this classification would still be there because again you would want to ask whether this twist uh, for for this region in which now you don't have the set but uh, uh, this twist exists because uh, it's a lattice, whether it belongs to the maximal algebra or the additive algebra. That's a question you can ask still, and the same for the whether it transforms non-local operators or not, whether it's complete or not. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, thank you, Javier, again. Thank and you. We thank hope you very much. to see you all uh, next time. Thank you. I hope to see thank you. you. Too.